suffering is not because of the pain we experience, but because of our refusal to accept the pain. And I just really got that very clearly, very recently. So all my life I've been carrying on the pain and the resistance to the pain of what happened to me in infancy and what happened to my family, which is that being Jews in Hungary under the Nazi occupation, my family was devastated by the genocide. My grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. My mother and I spent uh, my first year of my life under Nazi occupation, under conditions of privation and terror. I was sick. I was hungry. I was separated from my mother as a one-year-old. And all that left a deep imprint in my brain and in my mind and in my body. So based on that childhood infant travail, I'd always been convinced that some light had been killed inside me that will never open up. The light of unity. The light of love. The light of presence, you know? I could talk about it, I could teach about it, I could help others, but I would never get there myself. I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, you, Gabor, have always had this royalty to your grandparents who were killed in Auschwitz and to all the suffering in the world. And you've always made yourself believe that if for you to be happy or to experience joy is to betray all that suffering. And I was talking to somebody else and she said to me, you can't give the Nazis that victory that they kill the light in you. You can't give that to them. And uh, it really hurts, you know? All that stuff really hurts. But what creates the trauma is not that something hurts, but that uh, we don't know how to be with that pain. So we build all these defenses against it. We close our hearts. We try and do too much to fix things. We take on too much responsibility. Or we deny responsibility altogether. But we, we try and protect ourselves from the hurt of it. And so it's almost like a scar that forms around the wound. The wound is very sensitive and it's very painful if anybody touches it. But the scar tissue is also very hard and it's not very flexible, it's very rigid. So it's almost like trauma is a combination of a sensitive wound that if you, somebody touches it, it just triggers you and you hurt like crazy. Or if they touch scar tissue, there's no feeling there, there's hardness, there's no flexibility. So trauma is not what happened to you. Trauma is the wound that you sustained. That's a good thing. Because if trauma was what happened to me when I was a year old, I'm 77, I'm 76 years too late, aren't I? But if trauma is a wound that I sustained, wounds can be healed at any time. And if you look at the essence of trauma, it's a disconnection from the self. And so when you didn't experience affirmation and love, you were just disconnected from yourself. That's all. So that self-affirmation, that love, that can be reconnected with because it was never lost. It was just covered up by this wound and the scar. So airy fairy as it might sound, the work is really to reconnect with one's true self and to heal the wound. And that can be done for anybody who opens themselves to it. It can't be done for people who don't realize they're wounded. And the nature of this society is to give us so many distractions from ourselves. And so many people are so uncomfortable to spend even a moment with themselves. I mean, I know that for myself, the urge to check the cell phone every minute or if I have a free minute to Google something. This society is built on filling people's emptiness from the outside, which can never be done. And that's why it's also addictive because so many of us grow up with that emptiness and then we need to fill it with our activities and our acquisitions and our relationships. 
and our beliefs and our ideologies rather than saying, okay, there's emptiness here. What does that feel like? And uh, what is that all about? So healing does require the willingness to really experience oneself with the way one really is in the body and in the mind and in the heart. I'm not interested in hope. I don't know what's going to happen. What I do know is that I'm here now and you're here now. And the question is, what possibility is present at this very second for you and I and everybody else who's listening, whoever they are, to bend the future in a humane and loving direction? <laughs>